Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Keith. I'm the director here at the Atlanta School of Photography. And today we're gonna to go over one of the most important but probably the least known things about digital photography, which is getting the pictures directly from your camera's memory card onto an external hard drive on your computer. So let's get started. So the first thing, of course, is going to be getting the SD card out of your camera. And once you have that, there should be a card slot somewhere, either in your computer, on the side of your laptop, find it. or if you don't have it, you can easily get a card reader somewhere for like 20 bucks. Um, that's going to be a lot better than plugging your camera directly into your computer, uh, mainly because it drains the battery on your camera and we are putting robots on Mars, but it still takes four hours to charge my camera battery. And it'll show up in one of two places at least. So you've got your desktop here where it's gonna pop up and you'll have it as a little icon as the SD card. It might say something like EOS Digital or Nikon. EOS Digital is for Canon. Uh, it might say something like Nikon, uh, Olympus, Sony, something to the type of camera that you used to take the pictures or what you formatted your card as on your camera. If it's not showing up here on your desktop, we're gonna go down to our Finder window or File Explorer if you're on a PC. And over on the left-hand side, we've got a couple different options here and there it is under either locations or external devices or something to that extent. So the big thing that we're looking for is we have two different folders. We have DCIM, and MISC. So MISC, pretty obvious, means miscellaneous. It's just random things. I've never personally used it for anything, but it's there. Uh, then we have DCIM, which stands for Digital Camera Images. Yeah, there you go. So once we open up that guy, it's DCIM. You can remember that that stands for Digital Camera Images, or you can just remember, like I always have, don't go into miscellaneous. There's nothing in there. Even if you do, you just back up out of there and go into DCIM. So once we're in DCIM, we have even more folders because they like to make things confusing. So instead we have our camera, the name of our camera, uh, which might be for me was my 7D, my Canon 7D. Yours might be a Nikon D3500 or a Sony um, AR or a Olympus OMD, any one of those. That's generally what we're gonna see is the first folder up top. And once we go ahead and click on that, this is our images. We found them, yay! They're buried all the way there. I know that seems like a lot, but after a while, you're gonna be able to do this in your sleep because you're basically just double click, double click. There they are, easy enough. It's just taking a long time because I have to explain things, so yeah. There we go. So we've got our pictures in here. You can see that mine are raw images. So there's .cr2. That's Canon's version of a raw file. Um, yours might say .jpg for JPEG. Nikon's, if you shoot raw, they'll say .nef. Sony's are .arw. So don't get freaked out if you're just like, what are these? So yours might not be looking exactly like mine simply because you've got your Finder or File Explorer in a different view. So. Mac users, it's just up here. You might be seeing them in a thumbnail view instead. Uh, PC users, you're gonna go up to the top. There's a couple little tabs up there and one of the tabs says view and you should have the option for icons, either small or large. Mac users, we can actually choose to make our thumbnails smaller and larger with a little slider bar. If you're missing your slider bar, we're gonna go up to view and show status bar. Boom, and there it goes. Woo, it's magic. So yeah, you can make them ridiculously large if you wanted to. However, my favorite view is the list view. PCs, this might be called detail view. Uh, that's because it's giving me the most information that I can see out of my images. It's not only giving me the image name, it's giving me the date modified, the size, the kind. And I can even add more information on there. So uh, Mac users, if you hold down your control key, over name or date modified or any of the bars up here, 
I can actually choose to click on date created so I can see when the picture was taken. So in case if I accidentally saved over it or something like that, I have the date created here. This is a bit more uh, useful when you put the pictures on your hard drive once you get into editing them, but I like to have it on just in case. So if I'm looking for the pictures that I took at the earliest or the latest, I can just click on date created and change up my view to see the pictures that I took most recently versus the pictures that I took a while back. Essentially what we're doing now is we just want to select a group of pictures, whether it's some of them or all of them, to eventually move or copy and paste over into our external hard drive. My favorite is like grabbing a chunk of pictures and I can do that in my list view by date. So I can see, okay, my photo shoot on January 22nd started here. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down. Oh, January 25th, back up, back up, back up. That was a different shoot. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down my shift key, clicking on the last image, and I've just gotten a whole chunk of pictures. Pretty cool. So from there, all I have to do is go up here, going to edit, copy, boom. PC users, you actually have a little copy icon up in the top of your uh, file explorer window. So it should look like two little pieces of paper. So we've got that. And when we copy something, it's just our computer kind of like holding it in their hand, retaining it, just saying, okay, I've got these, what do you wanna do with them? What do we wanna do with them? We actually wanna put them on our external hard drive, yay! So why do we use an external hard drive? I get that question a lot. Uh, the reason being is for one, to save room on your computer's hard drive. There are a lot of pictures that you're gonna be taking or have already taken, and you don't wanna have them bogging down your computer and constantly having to move them off of your com computer's internal hard drive. So instead, we put them on an external hard drive. External hard drives tend to be a bit safer as well. And also you can organize them to be exactly what you want it to be, which is fantastic. You have your own organizational system, your own folder structure that you've created so you know where your pictures are. So once we plug in our external hard drive, I've got mine right here, boom. SK Sarah Keith, 2019. This is my 2019 hard drive. I might even have a second one for 2019. That's how I organize my hard drives. I have a different hard drive for every year, and then I have it broken down immediately by my ASOP work. I have some backups in here from my desktop computer. Then I have my client work under Seracade Studios. So the work that I did, the pictures that I just uh, copied are from a client meeting. So I would have that under some headshots that I had been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna say new folder, and I'm gonna say headshots, enter. And if I were to paste the pictures in right now, they would actually end up in this folder. Whichever one you go to say edit, paste, even though I'm clicked on this folder here, it would actually dump all of my pictures into this folder up top here. So I have to double click, boom. Now I'm in that folder. Now I can go edit, paste. And there they are. Away they go. So that's it. I know that seemed like probably a really long and complicated process. It's actually very, very easy. You'll get used to it after a while. It seems like a lot of steps, but at the end of the day, it's really not. And like I said, the big benefit is that you get to create your own organizational system. You're not relying on a different software or someone else to do it for you. And all of your pictures are safe on your external hard drive. Now, what I would even recommend doing is also backing the pictures up from uh, this external hard drive onto another external hard drive or a cloud uh, backup solution. Uh, that's because you just don't want all of your pictures in one place. It'd be horrible if something were to happen to that external hard drive 
And if it did, at least you'd have them somewhere else. So every once in a while, I have a large four terabyte external hard drive that I will back up all of my files, edited, unedited, anything from say the last time I backed it up, just drag and drop it or copy and paste it on over to the big hard drive. And then I also have a cloud solution system where I'm able to back up things to a cloud just in case if anything were to happen to both of them. Uh, that's kind of one of the big benefits of the cloud software is that it's virtually untouchable for the most part. Um, however, just things to keep in mind, um, price, accessibility, uh, ease of use. So if you're going to try out a cloud backup solution, just uh, test them out. There's usually free trials that you can get beforehand for about five gigs or so. Don't feel like you have to dive into it immediately. Do some research, talk to your friends, talk to other photographers and see which ones they're using and why they like them. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. Come hang out with us in class. We've got one starting up soon and we'll see you next time. Bye.